talk about something here today in this last khutbah of this year's Ramadan. It's more important than Ramadan itself. And I say, Wallahi, wa billahi, wa tallahi. The one who doesn't do this, he has no fast in Ramadan. And that is the importance of the salat. The man came into the masjid of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he prayed two rakat. And he prayed very quickly. And then after praying those two rakat, he came and he said, Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. The Prophet said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa Alaikum Salam Wa Rahmatullah. Irja, Fasalli, Fanna Kalam to Salli. Go back and pray, because you didn't pray. The man went back the second time, he prayed very quickly. He came and said, Salamu Alaikum Ya Rasulullah. He said, Wa Alaikum Salam Wa Rahmatullah. Go back and pray, you didn't pray. He went back a third time, he prayed very quickly. He came, Assalamu Alaikum Ya Rasulullah. He said, Wa Alaikum Salam Wa Rahmatullah. Go back and pray, because you didn't pray. The man said, Ya Rasulullah, teach me. I don't know. And then the Nabi explained to him, If you want to make salat, make a good wudu. After making wudu, stand up and face the qibla. Say Allahu Akbar. Read what's easy for you from the Quran. Say Allahu Akbar. Go into Ruku' and take your time. And then come up and say, Sami Allah liman hamida. And he went through the whole prayer. The point is, the man prayed. But according to the standard of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't pray. How many people, this is their condition. The very first thing Allah is going to ask you about, you, you, and you, very first thing, Yom al when the person is standing there, Allah is going to ask him about his prayer. Anybody, everyone has to pray. The Muslim doesn't have an excuse. I don't have any water. The earth has been made of purifier. Make tayammum. The person says, but I'm not in the masjid. I'm not in the place of prayer. I'm in the university. Al-Islam says, you have to go and find a place to pray. Islam gave us a window of opportunity. If you can't pray right on time, you have to pray somewhere in between that time. The Muslim doesn't have a right. Even the Muslim doctor, his job is to do brain surgery, to do a heart transplant. It's going to take him eight hours to do the operation. And Islam says to that doctor, you are allowed to combine Zuhr and Asr. You are allowed to combine Maghrib and Isha. The Salat is never taken off of the man. The man can't pray standing up, he has to pray sitting down. The person is paralyzed on his back, he has to pray on his back. Salat won't be taken off of you. During the time of the companions, if they knew you were a person who didn't give zakat, they made excuses for you. If they knew you were a person but you were eating and not fasting, they said, maybe he's sick, maybe he's a traveler. If you were a person who didn't make hajj, they would make excuses. The lady doesn't wear hijab. The companions used to say, maybe she's a new Muslim. Maybe she's from the desert. Maybe she's a slave. But if the companion knew, this person is not praying. The companion said, he's a kafir. There were no ifs and buts about it. That person is a kafir. And that's because of all of the ahadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-ahdu alladhi baynana wa baynahum as-salat. Man tarakaha faqad kafara. The difference between us and those people, Sikhs, Hindus, Jews, Christians, atheists, agnostics, the difference between us and them is salat. Anyone who abandons it, he's a disbeliever. So I ask you people sitting here today, how many people do you know from your relatives? They don't pray. How many people do you know from your neighbors? They don't pray. How many people do you know from your wife's family? They don't pray. If the companions knew those individuals, they said, he's a munafiq, he's a kafir. Now look at us. Someone comes to you to marry your daughter and you find out, does he drink khamar? If they say yes, he drinks khamar, you're gonna say, you can't marry my daughter, and rightly so. But do we ask the question, does he pray? Does he pray? Wallahi, the one who doesn't pray is doing a bigger crime and sin than the one who's drinking khamar. But with us, with us, the khamar is bigger than abandoning salat. Abandoning salat is kufrud. Drinking khamar is a kabira from a kabair. But it's not kufr. Everybody here. Everybody here, if we knew the man is drinking hummus, smoking crack, smoking weed, he wants to marry my daughter, we're going to say, well, Lord, he never, and rightly so. And I'm telling you, abandoning Salat is bigger than that. But we don't ask that question. And if we found out he didn't pray, it's okay, because he has a good job. The Salaf weren't like that. You want to know the position of the Salaf with Salat? 
The Nabi came to the people, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was telling the companions about the Dajjal. He said that when the Dajjal comes, he's going to be on this earth for 40 days, 4-0. The first day will be like a year. The second day will be like a month. The third day will be like a week. And the subsequent days will be like these days. If the Muslims heard this today, we would say something. But when the companions heard it, what was the thing that came to their mind when they heard that? They said, Ya Rasulullah, kayfa nusalli. When the Dajjal comes, if the days are like that, how do we pray? If one day is like a year, how do we determine the prayer? That was the most important thing to them. Because the Salah is a part of the identity of the Muslim. Umar radiallahu anhu, he has some beef, he has some drama with a non-Muslim who was from the Majus, a Magian. That man got upset, he said, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill him. So him, being a coward, he started to think, I'm going to assassinate the Amir al-Mu'mineen. But he didn't do it face to face to a, in a duel like a man would do. You have a problem with someone, be a man. Go tell him in his face. Don't be like a coward talking behind his back. Tell him in his face. He didn't want to meet Umar in his face. So what did he do? He poisoned the sword. He sharpened the knife. He poisoned the knife. He sharpened the knife. He poisoned the knife. He sharpened the knife. He said, yeah, they do a good job. He put another knife on the one. Made it a double blade. Double blade. With poison and it was sharp. When Umar started praying, he waited till Umar prayed. Why didn't he come in front of his face in the street and say, okay, let's get busy? Because he knew when those companions started praying, and they said, Allahu Akbar, they meant that. The man came, he stabbed the Amir al-Mu'mineen and did the knife like that. Ran down the line and started stabbing 14 other people. They all died. What happened? Umar radiallahu anhu said, the dog killed me. And Abdurrahman ibn Awf, who was in the front row, because the ulama of the companions used to pray behind the imam. The ulama, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, one of the ten promised Jannah, he took some steps up, and he completed the salat. They didn't stop praying. They took Umar home. They thought he was going to live. The 12 years of the khilaf of Umar radiallahu anhu, his aqidah, his tawheed, his ibadah, his justice, his manliness, it made those people think this man is, is invincible. 12 years, al-Islam spread. They thought he was going to live. If anybody can live, it's Umar. They gave him some milk. When he drank the milk, it came out of his intestines. They said, he's going to die. Don't let him, don't let him lose consciousness. Because if he loses consciousness, that's it. He started losing consciousness. They were trying to wake him up. He wouldn't wake up. He's about to die. Abdullah bin Abbas said, I know where to wake him up. Ibn Abbas said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, it's time for Salat. Umar woke up. He said to the people, Wallahi. La iman al iman la salat alahu. I swear by Allah, there's no iman for the one who doesn't pray. That man is dying. And he swore by no iman for the one who doesn't pray. Lastly, Akhwani, you want to know the position of prayer in Islam? The Nabi was dying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was dying, he lost consciousness. The Nabi said to the people, A salat, a salat. Take care of the prayer, take care of the prayer, and take care of your right hand possessions. Your slaves, your children, your women, people under your supervision. He lost consciousness. A lot of time went by. He woke up again. He said to the people, As-salat, as-salat, Second time, emphasis. He lost consciousness the third time. Ali, he asked the people, you want to know what the last words of the Nabi were? For you young brothers, what was the last words that came out of the mouth of the Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi He woke up the third time. He said, As-salat, as-salat, wa ma malakat al-manakum. And then he died.